have a little bit of a rare drams collection. <laughs> I'm quite a fan of independent bottlers. And as you can see, I have other bottles that are independent bottlers in here, or independent bottles as well. Uh, my first tasting was with a gentleman named Peter Curry from Scotland, and he worked for a company called Duncan Taylor. And I found it extremely educational um, because he could talk about all the different distilleries and so forth. And maybe some of the bunk, some of the mysteries we have from certain marketing stories and so forth. I found much more transparency from independent bottlers. So that is mine. Now, Travis. Yes, sir. You're a whiskey geek first, right? Whiskey, whiskey nerd, whiskey geek. Um, yeah, I, I, anytime we present these whiskeys to customers, my my main point I make is I am not a whiskey expert. I don't make whiskey. I don't work at a whiskey distillery, but uh, I read a lot of books, <laughs> drink a lot of whiskey, and talk to a lot of people uh, on a regular basis about this stuff. So I feel that that uh, puts me in the category of whiskey nerd, which I'm more than okay with. That's good. So there you go. We're all are. And what about you, Uncle Kenny? By the way, Uncle Kenny is Travis's uncle. <laughs> yes, that's that's where the Uncle Kenny comes from. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, I think my first bottle of whiskey was probably a Highland Park 12. Pretty, pretty standard uh, first bottle of whiskey. Um, I fell in love with McAllen 10 on a ski hill. It was uh, having a, a dram with uh, my buddy Tom, and my wife and I had just realized that we are going to have our first child, and a uh, bottle of whiskey and a cigar out on the deck and on the top of a mountain, and I think from there is probably where it, where it started. Travis, I mean, is a big part of my love of whiskey because he, uh, he does a lot of work to bring a lot of whiskeys to our club, and, uh, and I've got to try a lot of really cool whiskeys, both through Travis and through our dram, so... Pretty, feel pretty fortunate for the uh, the yeah. road that I've been on so far. It gets to be expensive, though. Yes, <laughs> expensive habit, yeah. I have two of those, actually. And I was, I was, pulling, I was pulling bottles out today, and uh, my wife looked in the office, and she's like, you have so much whiskey. I'm like, I know. It's going to go back to my, my, my basement collection soon. You don't uh, don't ever let her see my, my wife. <laughs> I, use, I use yours as a point of reference. I'm like, I, I'm not as bad as, yeah. day, as dad. Yeah, I have my Malton in Montreal is in here, and he's as usual tearing me apart because that's the only way he can be taller than me is by tearing me down. <laughs> we love to be beat up on each other, right? 4K is not my friend. Well, it's also because I have a dome above me and way too much light coming in, but we're not going to worry about that right now because we are here for the whiskey. Absolutely. Now, uh, there's another guy with a giant beard. Good day. Um, my my introduction to whiskey is actually recent. I'm one of the probably the newest to the whiskey world in the sense that like maybe five or six years ago, I liked rye to get drunk when I was a child. However, I never really appreciated whiskey till I uh, met with these guys, with Travis and, and Kenny and other people like that. What happened was we ended up just gathering and enjoying whiskeys, and then someone told me that. The history of whiskey, like the, the idea of this, this a 15 year old bottle includes a, a distillery that's been around for 100 plus years. And there's a story behind that. And there's always this sense of um, layers of, of just different things going on, war and world conflicts and and different laws being passed. And, and yet at the end of it is just this little juice. And I thought that was the neatest thing. And I started digging into that, fell in love. And now I have a whiskey wall as well. And I have whiskey friends and I have a whiskey world and I. And you have a so whiskey wife. Part -time and Your whiskey wife says you have too much whiskey. Well, I think everyone's whiskey wife says they have too much whiskey. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing is that it's, I fell in love with the idea of whiskey first. Now I'm now I'm really getting the hand of the smell and the taste and the whole enjoyment of whiskey is definitely part of my life now, and I can't get enough of it. It's awesome. Every every whiskey bottle is a little bit different. There's a story behind each one. I think that's such a cool thing. It is. I like the stories too. You've got a, as a child, my goal, my God, you had fun parents. So, <laughs> so now we have, um, you guys have a pretty interesting thing together, right? 
uh, we've got all working for rare drams at the same time. So, you so all, we, the, the guy you work for is this gentleman right here. <laughs> That's Tartan Pants Bob, the uh, owner of Rare Drams. And he he now lives in Glasgow, and uh, his daughter-in-law runs the company with his son in BC, Stacy and Jason, and he's handed the uh, running of the company to the three of us dinguses here in Alberta. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. That is awesome, actually. Oh, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm like, why can't I see everybody? Now I can. I had you guys all in the wrong spot, except we don't need this camera anymore. Uh, tra or um, Anybody that's in the group here on the Skype, Uncle Kenny, if you can try to re-invite Dolph, being that you're the uh, IT expert, so we have <laughs> So... <laughs> You had a full day with Bob. You guys went together uh, on a trip to Scotland. What was your purpose of your trip initially? There's Dolph. Finally jumped in. There he is. Finally, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, boys. Hey, uh, Dolph is the president. When we get his picture, it'll pop in here. It just seems to be slow. Is the president of the Alberta Scotch Society. Yeah. So we Happy had to be here, boys. Yeah, we've had a round of inter introductions here, okay? So we're going to get into our first whiskey here. Dolph, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so the first whiskey, if I get this to work right here, is... because you I, I think you may need to reset one more time. <laughs> not Dolph, not Dolph. <laughs> okay. Did this happened to Ken? This happened to Kenny earlier? And as soon as you reset the original screen on your end, Dan, then it was all good to go. You mean when I delete all you guys? No, you bring it back up oh. to your, everyone else to go, as a group. Right now, you look, it looks perfect. I've got all four of you on my screen. Beautiful. Not, but you're in split screen now, Dan. Yeah, that's good. That's a new thing. Yeah, I just brought you all back in. I can do... Uh... Hey, the Malted Man Cave. What's up, buddy? We are talking about five new whiskeys. So the first one we're going to get into here is... Uh, what is it? <laughs> Glengarry. Glengarry. Thank you very much. Right? Yeah, it's an 11-year-old Glengarry. It has a very nice nose on it right now. I am trying to find, because we changed the order slightly, the Glengarry picture. There we go. Oh, there we go. So we now have... They're tasting. You've got citrus. I smell green apples. All I see yeah. is citrus. I'm not citrus. I don't get any apples at all. I love. I love the. T I love the actual name. If you look at it, the Glengarry is how you say it. If you actually look at the thing. It doesn't look at like that at all. It's a perfect example of whiskey. And sometimes you get the scotches of the weird Celtic names. That's why you say Glengarry. <laughs> to see me without facial hair. I shaved just for this. <laughs> I have to figure out if I'm, how to shave again. I, I'm, I'm, this course <laughs> is weird. It's, it's too easy. Denny Ma. How you doing, Denny? So, uh, we're missing our, our leader here, but that's okay. I think it, this is the first time anyone tried this. I think he's chasing down a child, to be honest. But I'll talk about Glenn Geary a little bit. Right. <laughs> you talk about this, and we're going to... Okay, so this is... A, so I first, have, of, I have, have, first of all, one sec. I have this in an old Perth glass. I bet you oh, nice. one of those. Nice. And I got a nice, nice uh, set of legs on this. It's very oily, but very runs pretty quick. Okay, tell, very us, nice. tell us what you're going to say there, Dave. Well... If Travis wants to jump on it, or do you want me to continue with the Glengarry, Travis? Oh, you carry on. I just had to hit some uh, a four-year-old that wanted to know what was going on down here. So uh, freedom. <laughs> so you go ahead with the Glengarry. Hey, so I think that the Glengarry, what's fascinating about the Glengarry is, is is it's actually part of a range we call the strictly limited range. I'm not sure if we've ever talked about that publicly. Um, have we? When did it jump up, Travis? From 47.5. So the strictly limited range uh, was always, since we've started, 46%. And just in this last year, they bumped it to 
and uh, just change the bottling, just kind of revamp the range a little bit. But it's the it's the Morrison Mackay range. It's usually one or two cask bottlings, under a thousand bottle releases, and usually in that sixty to a hundred dollar range for the strictly limited releases. Now this is at an ABV of fifty forty seven point five. She's she's a little sharp. I was just going to ask Dolph, Dolph, have you had much experience with Glengarry? Because I haven't had a ton, and I, I hear different things, but they, they talk chill. about us. What's and, that, Dolph? Yeah, I've got a couple on the shelf, but only one open. And it was malt heavy, and it made me happy because I like it, and I think it was a cast strength. I don't think it was an SMWS I have, though. I can't remember. I think it was a... No, a distillery edition, but I can't remember which one. I'd have to look in my little my little file of which ones I've got. I would agree with I would agree with Dan that there's a uh, at forty seven five. It's definitely it almost tastes like it's like fifty plus. Yeah, I would. A little sharp. I, when mm -hmm. I look, I thought it was higher. Yeah. Ah, uh, but I I've I've had this one a couple times since the first sample bottle and the first time I had it, I said, it's probably going to be one of these whiskeys that is going to change each time I drink it. Good. Uh, which for me is a sign of an interesting whiskey. Good. And I know you guys probably have experience with this. The first time you open a bottle, a lot of the times it's tight and it's just, yeah. it's not there yet. Like you had a, a glass at a tasting and you're like, Oh, I want that bottle. And then when you first crack it, there's, it's just tight, and I felt that was probably the case with this Glengarry, but it is, it's opened up a lot. I just um, since uh, three drops of water in it, and it's it's opened up. It's it's very nice right now. It's anyone else get the apple yet, or am I still alone on that one? You're all. I, I'm getting the citrus, Dolph. I don't know if I'm getting the green apple. I'm definitely getting the citrus kind of fruits, fresh fruits, but yeah, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting a. Uh, Definitely the kind of the citrus on the nose. Maybe yeah, I'm hitting apple and I'm hitting grassy. I get some of the grass as well. Yeah, these are good smells for me. I'm, I'm happy, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I get. Yeah, so, no, I, I really like the nose on this one. I just I did have my first sip and it's actually my first whiskey of the night, so I found it quite quite hot right off the top. Um, second sip, the palate my palate's kind of opened up a little bit and uh was was quite nice i'm just i'm gonna keep sipping on it and it's 11 years old yeah so it's not that the the spiciness or the heat i got off the beginning isn't really an age issue no uh dan just in my research today on glen geary and you guys that have been to my tastings before know i like to come up with little whiskey nerd things on the distilleries <laughs> which is good like uh it. this one um when it talks about the distillery character, it says spicy and meaty is sort of like their distinct character. So that could be the spiciness just coming through right from the new make. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Actually, kind of cool tonight in the five whiskeys that we're drinking from the new releases. Two of the distilleries are actually two of the oldest in Scotland, and this is one of them. 1797. Wow. Yep. <laughs> the last really? And it's in the eastern... Highlands, and it's owned by Beam Suntory, actually. That's right, and that's uh, another kind of cool thing that ties to this whole lineup tonight is um, in 1970, after it was mothballed for a few years, it was actually sold to Stanley P. Morrison, who is uh, okay. the father of Brian Morrison, one of the uh, owners of Morrison Mackay. So there's kind of a neat tie <laughs> to what we're, what we're drinking here tonight, yeah. So explain to people why why Morrison Mackay matters to what we're drinking. <laughs> well, it matters. They, I mean, obviously Morrison and Mackay is the company that produces all this stuff, but the Morrison and Mackay families just have a huge history in the whiskey industry. Um, so lots of times when we release some of these casts, people say, "Oh, you guys get a lot a lot of variety and a lot of different distilleries." And I think, and even some of those old Perth casks. And I think it's because of the the Morrison and Mackay ties to the industry. They're able to go to distilleries that maybe some of the independent bottlers can't and get casks. And 
that just gives us a wider variety of opportunities for neat whiskeys. So yeah, it does. Yeah. So Stanley P. Morrison was the original, was the owner of Morrison Bowmore. And then, um, a couple more, um, I think, uh, Kenny Mackay was a director or a chairman and Brian Morrison was also a director or chairman. So they all had ties to Bowmore and Glengarry and stuff. So it's kind of neat just to see how that comes to fruition down the road. Welcome, Whiskey in the Six just popped into the chat. Hope you're doing well. Whiskey in the Six. Yeah, he just had a, did a live, so he, he was, uh, you can check it out. Just up. He just finished doing a live uh, about Klein Leash, right? Which you guys have actually released several Klein Leashes through the uh, Rare Drams. I have one sitting back here right now. 25-year-old Klein Leash. Yeah, that one's delicious. And Sipper Social Club just popped in. He was a guest with Whiskey in the Six. And Whiskey in the Six uh, sent a bottle of Lot 40 across Canada to donate to Drams for Fams two years ago, I think. So nice. well, very nice, nice. generous, cool. generous man. Both him and uh, Jeremy from Sipper Social Club, Rob and Jeremy, are very generous with, with things, right? Something about the whiskey community. Yep. So why don't you guys, and you pick who wants to tell first, tell us about your journey to uh, your full day with Bob in Scotland. <laughs> Should I, uh, before we begin, am I frozen? You are frozen, but I think yeah. you still sound good. Oh, we can hear you. Can you guys still hear me on the YouTube part? Yep. Yeah, everybody can hear him. Anybody not here, Bearded Dave? Can you hear this? This is Bearded Dave. Yeah, it's a good frozen image of you, Dave. Keep talking. Do you yeah. want to tell the the, the, the one-day job interview, or do you guys want to move on to whiskey number two and then tell the story while we're starting off? Sure. Well, uh, whiskey number two is pretty special. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's do it. And that is? Whiskey number two is the 1992 Auchentoshin. Ah, yes. As we're going many to pour it here right in front of everybody. And As many I'm going to pour it into a Morrison and Mackay Glencairn glass. Just because I have one and I wanted you guys to see it because I know you don't have one. I've got an Akintoshin glass. So I figured... <laughs> nice. Akintoshin. I They gave me a tumbler. An Akint when I was doing an Akintoshin tasting, they gave me a tumbler. And I'm like, why do I get a tumbler? I don't really understand. <laughs> anyway. There you go. So this is, go ahead, let's talk about the Akintoshin for a second here. All good. Dave, I'll let you do a little Akintoshin talk. Or Kenny, I got a uh, one more child uh, situation <laughs> upstairs, and I'll be right back. The, the beauties of live YouTube. Yeah. Um, I could talk about it a little bit. Kenny, if you want, do you want to talk about the actual distillery? Kenny, or do you want to go for it? Uh, no, go ahead, Dave. Start it up. I'll fill in any blanks. So, um, first thing I want to mention is this. Actually, what's cool about the Akintoshin, awesome. it's not really short up there, but it's if you look at the picture, you see it's uh, in that, that wooden box, and you see that label, and that right in the middle of the label, it says Celebration of the Cask. So what happens with with our Carnmore, our rare drama releases, the last one we have is called Strictly Limited. And that means it's brought down to 47.5% and all that jazz. These ones are... 100% cast strength. So if it's celebration of the cask, it means it's a cast strength whiskey, meaning that we don't actually add anything to it. We don't add any water, anything to it at all. We just open up the cask, we pour it into a bottle, and this is what we get. So this guy is at 48.4%. So after 27 years, it's still held on to a, a pretty sizable chunk of whiskey. Um, and it's, 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 that's what it's, what, the, what we get with these celebration of the casks. What I find very cool about them is there's, because there's nothing added to it, and because nothing been temp like it's not been adjusted in any way, it's almost pure whiskey in these little bottles. Um, you get a really good idea what the actual distillery is all about. So that's what's cool about the celebration of the cast. Alcatoshin itself, I went to a tasting actually in Victoria. I kind of feel like a lot of the releases, like the the standard releases of Alcatoshin, Alcatoshin is very um how should I say it? It's kind of like beginner whiskey friendly. It's meant to kind of introduce people to the whiskey world. It's super, it's blended to a way, or it's it's vatted to a way where it's super smooth and relaxed. But smelling this thing, 
there's so much character in the smell of this whiskey. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's uh, no, no, it's beautiful. I love cast rank. This is one of the things I like about independent bottlers is they yeah. get a bottle and you can really see the potential of the whiskey, right? And the different things they really could do when they're not putting out their main line for the gen. Yeah, that please everybody. Yeah. Or, or just like when we, the independent bottlers, we steal a, a cask sometimes. We get a hold of a cask and we tuck it away for a while. And we let, we see what happens. We, we have to worry only about that cask, not about the entire distillery, right? We are focused on finding the right whiskey at the right time. And we don't have to care about the details. We just kind of, if it's ready, we put it in a bottle, we bring it to market. That's right. So this guy is 27 years old, Akintoshin. It's amazing. So hey, now, Jeff. Yeah, Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, when the morrison Bullmore split happened, um, whatever it was, 15-ish years ago, a, a lot of that um, included uh, a lot of the casks, warehouse casks that they had in storage at the time, and, and Morrison brought those over to the morrison Mackay relationship, correct? I I can I cannot confirm or deny that. I I'm <laughs> sure I'm sure there would probably be some casks, but I I don't know for a fact. Okay. If they were able to bring any over. Well, Bowman, I, just, I mean, some of the celebration of the cask stuff that we've seen coming out, I mean, uh, th there's got to be, you know, they, they've been warehoused for such a long period of time that, that you'd think that there was uh, maybe a bit of a relationship prior to it, it actually getting bottled, right? Yeah, and I don't know the extent of which casks are bought. I mean, casks can be bought directly from distilleries. But there's also a lot of cask brokers um, that are out there. There's also yeah. casks that are sold for blending purposes. There's a whole bunch of ways a distillery can get casks, or sorry, a bottler. So I don't know. I'm sure each cask has its own special story, like <laughs> some way, shape, or form. Like every whiskey, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, I think you guys touched on it while I was dealing with crying baby number two for the for last 15 minutes. But the... Um, the, the thing about the celebration of the cast that I love is that each each one is a it's like a snapshot in time. And the one thing I love doing when we pour these is looking up songs that were came out in that year, however many years ago, like 1992 okay. for this one. And just it just gives you it's like a snapshot in, in time. So for this one, 1992, but we've drank whiskeys from like 1980 before or whatever it is. And I just find it neat. It's like a looking back a little bit. Yeah. So what song came out in 1992? I'm guessing it's Backstreet Boys. There's got to be some Backstreet Boys in 1992. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, you got to tell us something, but we don't talk about Backstreet Boys here, okay? I, I also think that the idea, the idea that someone in 1992 maybe started his first day on the job, or maybe started like two, three weeks into the job, is involved somehow in this cask, and now bottled it. Like a couple months ago, when this was bottled, and has spent 27 years in the industry, and this bought this cast started when he was a baby, and now he's like a master distiller or whatever, and this cast was around the entire his entire career. Imagine someone like 30 years career is into this cup of juice, and I think that's such a cool idea. Yeah, that's this could be someone's entire lifetime in the industry. Is this right here? I think that's such a neat thing. It is, yep. Um, Uncle Ken. Celebration of the cask comes in more than one type, though, right? You have uh, you have also a black gold. It's still considered celebration of the cask. It is, and it's a hev heavily sherried uh, whiskey. So, I mean, that's you can you can tell by the box. I they're often going to be a little bit more um, pricey. Um, I don't know, Trav. Do you have any celebration of the cask on your shelf there? Uh, so we black gold. We have, I'm sure Dan's going to show us one here. But <laughs> we have the uh, Ben Rennes Black Gold, but it's buried in the back for an upcoming uh, tasting. <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is uh, Dolph's showing a 1997 Wardhead, which is a teaspoon Glenfiddich. Yeah, but Dolph does not have a picture, so we can't show anything Dolph is showing. Oh, <laughs> I have no picture. No. Let me get back. I can do that. Dad, I can, I can see a black gold right behind you. Which one? Uh, it was right behind your head. Yeah, you know, you're never going to be on here again if you start pouring out my collection. But. <laughs> <laughs> here is a black gold. Black. Yeah. 
So and the biggest thing, you, you look at the color of it, you can you can just tell it's a, a heavily sherried. Um, it's 80, not. Was that 89? Yeah. Which one is that, Dan? This would be my Glenrothes. So nice. giving you oh, a nice. hard time because you don't get Glenrothes in here sometimes. Or sent to a different province, so. Well, we'll we'll do our best to I to get some do. some Glenn Rothis to you. I'm very impressed by your guys' efforts, and I don't think a lot of people notice that. But we were supposed to drink this and talk about the day with Bob. That's right. So who wants I guess to start? Who Travis, wants you have to start because you're the one that reached out early before everyone said hi to Bob. <laughs> so um, rare. Rare Drams was introduced to me when I met Bob. He invited me as his guest to a tasting at a local whiskey shop. And me and my brother Jesse went. And basically the whole, it was one of those events where you go table to table and you can sample as much different whiskeys as you want. But Jesse, my brother and I just sat or stood by Bob's table the whole two hours of the event. And Bob just gave us a education on on whiskey. Some, something about giving us feedback here. We have an echo there. Maybe it's the phone, Dolph's phone, maybe. He might be trying to get his picture up. I don't know. There we go. So, uh, so that was it. That was the first time I met Bob, and we chatted over emails and you know, social media and all that. And then in 2017, Ken and Dave and myself and my brother and another friend of ours, Dan, went to Scotland for a big trip. And I messaged Bob and said, Bob, why don't we go for a drink or something? And Bob met us at our hostel. Yes, we stayed in hostels. We we, we took the the cheaper route on our trip. Yeah. What's that, Dolph? I said he's a good-looking guy. The picture of him just came up. <laughs> yeah, Bob is a Bob is a gentleman. Um, so he showed up at our hostel and he took us in some cabs. And you gotta think, I'm we're just getting off airplanes. We got our ten dollars sport coats from Value Village on, and our first stop was the Hunter Lang head offices in Glasgow. And Bob takes us up this into this room, and everyone shows up. They got suits and ties, and it's this fancy. <laughs> fancy boardroom with leather chairs and uh, they bring out about six or seven bottles and they put them on the table in front of us and they're just clear glass bottles with little white stickers on them and it was like Carsbridge 50 year uh, Pity Vic 42 year and it was just crazy crazy whiskeys I still say the best whiskey I had on that trip was probably on that very first whiskey I drank which was a single grain sovereign Carsbridge 42 year old that Came to Alberta, actually. Delicious right. stuff. So I, I, I'm going to jump in here. So, like, Travis yeah, Travis is, invites us to this. This He's like, yeah, we, we got this thing in Glasgow. This guy's going to take us out for some drinks. And now I'm like, okay, when does it start? He's like, 11 a.m. or whatever it was. Is when it starts. And I'm, that doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm like, sure. And then we drive up to this mansion, and we get invited to this beautiful tasting room. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. This is... They, someone made a mistake. I'm supposed to be in a pub drinking a beer, and that's about as, as luxurious as it's supposed to get. But Bob took us out and took it, showed us the town a little bit, and we didn't, we weren't really sure why. We had an idea that Bob was this nice guy in Glasgow, but we weren't really sure what he was, what, what, <laughs> if there's any other motives. But all we knew was he was showing us the best time in Glasgow, and I, w- I felt a little bit overwhelmed, to be honest, at the beginning, because I'm wearing my $5 to $10 sports jacket I bought at Value Village and I'm sitting in a room with in a Hunter Lang's private tasting room and I'm just in a little bit of shock at the whole experience but it was awesome it was phenomenal and everyone was so polite and kind and welcoming it was awesome. Hey Dave you know what for me that day was so uh, it was both ends of the spectrum because we had you know head office beautiful chairs beautiful table top-notch whiskey to start our day. Mahogany and- and then, we, and then we went to a little whiskey shop that was in the basement of a condo building, like a like a walk up flat kind of building called Inverarity in Glasgow. And it could have either been a whiskey shop or a comic book store. The, <laughs> they had they had um, stand up cutouts of like Boba Fett and, and like 
Darth Vader helmets. They had this table that looked like it was made out of plywood. Uh, and Peter Mackay from Morrison Mackay came and did our tasting in this little basement whiskey shop. We were just crowded around this table. I was afraid if I moved too far, I was going to knock a stack of boxes over or something. And it was great. That's where we tried the uh, the old Perth 21. Yeah. And, and I actually hauled the bottle, bottle back from Scotland and then bought a second bottle here when I got home. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, just like, both ends of the spectrum, right? Like, And that's, I mean, that's kind of what this whiskey is all about. Like, you don't have to be in the boardroom you can you don't have to be in the, you can you can drink whiskey wherever you are it's awesome as we're drinking a 27 year old Akatoshan, it's right this is the top end the, the the taste the sorry i just want to go back to the whiskey a little bit the actual taste what do you think of the aftertaste of that adult the aftertaste it's long yeah and isn't it awesome? it changes it goes from i get sweet and then it goes into a bit of spice at the end which you don't get from Akatoshan too often right yeah that's cool so and the spice, I wouldn't say, I'm not saying heat. I mean, like, it, it is spicy compared to heat. I don't get the 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 cast strength heat off of this at all. It all blends together. It's nicely balanced. Right? So we have some people in the chat right now that I don't know. Uh, Tim Iceberg. Or he's a rare he's a rare drammer. He's a very nice man. Ah, very good. And Cheryl Stone must be a rare drammer as well. Uh, yep. Yeah. So what do you what do you have to do to become a rare grammar? Just uh, maybe tell everybody about that. It's a uh, do you guys do you guys want to keep dabbling on the rest of this Aki or no. do you want to move to number three with while we tell the rare grammar story? Or do you want to nose that Akintosh a bit longer? I'm gonna say <laughs> drop in mine. That's great. So we'll move move on to the uh, whiskey number three, which is the. 2011 Glen Berge, and then I'll let let you guys dabble while we explain the rare drammers. So the uh, the rare drammers essentially is it's it's a email list that we started building a couple of years back, and all it's been is when we go to these different whiskey tastings and events, it's we just ask people for their emails and we start building this list and we're like, well, we don't want this to be just your regular email list where you get spammed on a regular basis. We wanted this to be more of like what we're trying to build with the rare drivers is more of a whiskey club, a whiskey community within oh. Edmonton and Calgary, uh, which is our regions. Yeah. And there's also uh, whiskey drivers, uh, rare drivers in BC as well. But it, when you sign up to be a rare drummer, you just send me an email, Travis at raredrums.com. And we just send you out an email when we have new releases coming out. We do, VIP rare drammer tastings where if you're not a rare drammer, you don't even get an invite. Uh, we have free uh, these open house events you can come to uh, where we just basically hang out in a room and talk. It's not like a formal setting. It's more of just a social event. Um, we just created, uh, pretty excited about this. I sent the email today. Our first ever rare drammer membership cards. Uh, yep. If you don't, if you don't have one, you just don't know what you're doing in life. Okay, so just <laughs> sign up and we'll get you one. We'll get you one. If you email us, you might get be able to pick your number. So yeah, your uh, membership number. So it's it's just a, we're just trying to build a, a whiskey community around rare drams and just we just the three of us we just want to share how much fun we're having with it with more people is all. Oh, you guys you do a great job because you are serious about whiskey, but not in a level where people are like, geez, man, I just want to have a drink You're You have fun. Um, I have seen some pictures of Kenny doing uh, tastings and at certain events, but the ones I see from uh, Travis, they have, you know, treats and candies and chocolate <laughs> and so forth. Kenny's just standing there, you know, hey, try my whiskey. Or, uh, <laughs> When you look like Kenny, you don't need yeah. chocolate. To, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. When you're buying, when you're buying whiskey from Mark Wahlberg, it's it's pretty easy just to walk <laughs> up and say, "Hi." There you go. Yeah. So the, the, uh, Nicholas says that you are really fond of nosing your whiskey, Dave. Yeah, because I've been stuck in the same picture. Yeah. But I'm not. This Glen Berge, I would smell this all night. Yeah. This is for this is a strictly limited again, forty-seven point five. And my God, it has got a smell in it. That's amazing. So this is where they say you're getting apples. 
Oh, like it's, it's like smelling like apple soup. Like it, like almost like a made for pies. <laughs> I've never had apple soup, but let's try. Apple well, you, I made mean, <laughs> weird things happen. Apple sauce, maybe? No soup. <laughs> Delicious. So hot apples, not cold apples. Hot apples, yeah. For me, anyway. Right on. Can you guys see why no, I put this one? Caramel oh. apples. Let's go for that. Caramel apples. Yeah, yeah I like that. Back down there. Can you guys see why I wanted this one uh, third after those first two? It's just, it's a little bit more of a slap in the face, like in terms of flavor, not quite as delicate. Just total, like you said, just the nose on this is incredible. What do you think, Whiskey Throttle? I um, yeah. like it. I like it. <laughs> Definitely getting the oranges. I, this is one of those ones that the nose is uh, what I really get a lot of, and I, I can do that. Probably the rest of the night here, I think. So if you look at the color, if you had the color of both, but the Glen Geary is a 11-year-old, and the uh, Glen Berge is 8 years old. Yeah. But my guess is that the Glen Berge is probably a first fill bourbon barrel, just with the amount of flavor you're getting off of that nose. And we don't always know for a fact if it was first fill or refill, but you just based on flavor profile after eight years, uh, my guess is first fill bourbon barrel on that one. I like it. Yeah, that's a ton of flavor. Huge profile to it. It's fun. I haven't tasted it yet, though. I'm curious. Dave, you haven't tasted any whiskey for a while. Yeah, all I've been doing is smelling. <laughs> just Such a little bit. So, like, so Belanger is talking about, I'm watching the, the feed a little bit now as well. What do you think of the, the 46 to 47.5, that small 1.5 percentage? Is that going to make a difference? Oh. I, that's a question. It's a good question. I think it does, but I'm also a little bit biased. Um, I see someone that's not as biased. Dolph, what do you think? 46 to 47.5 from that Sleepy Limited range. And I would, in a young whiskey, I do. I think so. And in older whiskey, maybe not so much, but I think in the younger whiskeys, you can tell the difference between 43, 46, and then when we go to Independence and we go to 78, well, 47, 48, 49, I think you get it. The subtle differences hit me on the nose more than the palate, though. So yeah. I'm like Daniel. I can sit here and I can smell this all night, but I love young whiskeys on the nose. Oh, uh, it's a great See? taste, though. Oh, I haven't See? got there yet. No, I'm anticipating it. it. I'm waiting. I just dabble. Yeah, go for it. The uh, the international um, marketing director for Morrison Mackay, his name is Neil Hendricks, and he came on his first trip to uh, Edmonton, and we were driving around, and he <laughs> spent a couple days driving with him, and he said, so what do you think of the lineups? What are your thoughts? And I said, I love the Strictly Limited line. I love what it is. It's an everyday whiskey, but it's they're always different. I said, but I would love it if it was just a little bit higher than 46%. I love 48% whiskeys. That's kind of my wheelhouse. And he said, he said, okay, I got you. And then within a year, they had bumped it to 47.5. And I sent him an email. I was like, you don't know how happy this makes me. Because you can always water it down like that Glen Geary used a couple drops of water, but you can never take water out. So I think it's a big difference, to be honest. I also think that these, these casks, are delicious these whiskeys are so good if you water it down you sometimes lose that flavor if you if you have an opportunity to bring it down to where you're comfortable that's great but each cast like each these are still single casks that we're pouring out here or sometimes two casts that are are vatted together but they're still very very unique whiskeys and i think that 47.5 gives us a chance to show off a little bit which i think is cool that being said i do drink whiskey often enough that i like heavier whiskeys um I enjoy a 61% every once in a while, but I'm 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 spoiled, I guess. The current one is uh, two bourbon barrels, and they produce 523 bottles from the two barrels. So pretty small outturn from two barrels. I like it. Uh, can I give my Glen Berge fun facts that I looked up all day today? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Easy. Uh, you guys have all, I'm sure, at some point drank Ballantines. It's the second largest selling whiskey in the world. Really? Uh, yeah. Easy. Glenn, Glenn Berge is one of the key malts in Ballantines. Yeah. So if you've had Ballantines, it's it's got lots of Glenn Berge, and it's also one of the reasons why we rarely see Glenn Berge uh, on the market. It's because most of it goes to Ballantines. 
So well, kind of a neat one. I always like knowing where this whiskey's going. That's one of the reasons I also like to get independence because we get a lot of whiskeys that are not normally on the shelf that give us, um, you know, an opportunity to see what that distillery is like and maybe get some hints of what's in the blends, right? Totally. Yeah. And actually, uh, just a quick one here because I just talked to Mike Breezebois with Boonahaven and Distill, who I know was on earlier tonight. I talked to him earlier in the week about um, uh, fermentation times at Boonahaven, and he said 55 to 100 hours. Oh, wow. I, I said, well, what does that mean? He said, well, the, the distillery doesn't always run on the weekends, apparently. I forget if this was Deanston or Boona, but same story applies. So if it says 55 to 100 hours... That's because during the week they do 55-hour fermentations, and on the weekends it goes to 100 hours because no one's at the distillery. <laughs> <laughs> so for Glenn Berge, when I was looking it up, Glenn Berge does it's 55 to 100-hour fermentations, so I'm guessing that means they're, they're not open on the weekends. So kind of a neat little thing there. I have, I have one more thing to say about Glenn Berge. I think the first – like a lot of these rare whiskeys, you can almost start thinking about the first time you've had a Glen Berge or a Glen, you know, especially ones that are a little bit harder to find, um, but like a Ben Nevis or something. But at the, this Glen Berge, the first Glen Berge I had was in Avalor Distillery. And I remember that, I remember it clearly because I had a sip of it. I had a drive that day, but I had a sip of it. And um, just a step, actually, it was so disgruntled by it. But the idea was, is that, Sometimes these kind of unique whiskey distilleries, if you've had the first one on a really unique spot or a unique time, you can kind of remember that moment, right? When you try the whiskey again, because there's this, it's almost the flavor profile that continues. I think it's cool. Hey, I love it. I actually have that bottle. There, that's the bottle right there. Oh, oh that's the bottle. You can only buy it in the actual distillery. You've got to have it's to pull it again for a second here. Travis is like, I'll get that bottle. Travis. I'll get that bottle. <laughs> yeah. the bottle to show? Who was showing the bottle? Oh, I was down. Sorry. Show Dave it. was just telling the story of um, the first we number you had was that guy. And it's 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 stupid. It's so good. Awesome. So So whenever you have that burgie now, remember that moment. We'll try to remember that moment. But we weren't. Well Dave, I'll open the ball at Christmas. How about that? No. <laughs> So, did you already tell us about the Bal Balmoral Pub? Was that the... <laughs> we, we save that for the next whiskey, maybe. I don't think you told anything about during this whiskey, because Dave just kept talking about whiskey and over... <laughs> Is he like... Well, we should, we should finish the, uh, the Bob story. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> after, after the, the liquor store tasting with, with uh, Kenny Mackay... Uh, Bob took us for fish and chips at this walk-in fish and chip shop, and it was some of the best fish and chips. I think probably based partly on the fact that we were in Scotland and hanging out with a, a very special man the whole day. And then he took us to what's that pub called in Glasgow? It's a really the Horseman Pub or something. Yeah, yeah I was at that one. The, really, the popular long, pub. I think it's closed now. No, That's I don't think so. Yeah, no, no. I think it. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's around anymore. I was told. Someone will have to confirm. I, that's that's Bob's son's favorite pub. I'm sorry, Jason. Collins, he said it's his favorite pub. And it has like the horse track all on the top that you can watch the horses go across, and no, the little toy called the horseshoe. And it has it states that it has the longest bar. I think that's yeah. It. Yes, I I have a picture of it. I've been there. I I had dinner there, and then I walked we out need, and went to the to the train station. There we you need go. to confirm that that's open or closed. Uh, and Bob introduced us to a Scottish tradition called the Hoffenhoff, which is a half pint and a half dram. Yeah, we had that with uh, Peter Mackay and him. Well, Peter Mackay first. Peter Mackay took us to a bar, to a pub in some fancy area in Perth. And then we walked over to some big fancy hotel and had a, had a private dinner. They had it all set up for us. It was a phenomenal event, man. Well, you got to see Dan. You got to see why we fell in love with this this company and this brand. And rare is oh. the 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 uh, the way they treat people. They're family owned companies, and they treat you like family. And yeah. you were guests, but you felt like family. And that's that's kind of why we've fallen in love with both Morris and Mackay and the whole Rare Drams uh, family. So uh, yeah, I'm no. glad you got to experience that. 
I also have a soft spot for Bob because after that horse, that long the, the pub, he brought us upstairs to a karaoke bar, and this man stuck it out to like 2 a.m. with us singing karaoke. <laughs> like he picked us up at 11 gave us 16 drams brought us for fish and chips and beer and then brought us for karaoke the best job interview of my life yeah, <laughs> yeah so at about at about 11 o'clock or so or midnight at the karaoke bar we found out that bob was was it was kind of a job he won't say it i don't think but we think it was a full day job interview to make sure we didn't act like idiots all day and uh he said i'd I want you guys to represent rare drams in Alberta, and we said, "Yep, we'll take it." <laughs> so that's the that's the full day in Glasgow. That was our first day in Scotland. Hard to beat. Impossible to beat. Single malt whiskey says there's nothing in his glass. Well, buddy, do you need us to hold on a second so you can catch up? But I don't think that's gonna happen. But fill your glass up, my friend. Oh, he's oh, got he's, he's got some rare drams in his cabinet. So we have a next whiskey and that is are we ready for the boona haven no uh we're gonna do the ruin more than the boona haven oh, okay i wasn't quite sure of the order oh. uh, so the four how many people know about you how did you pronounce this ruin more ruin Dolph, is it i, I was just saying ruin more ruin more but like you know, i always so. put a little d at the end of the sound for it though ruin more Rudmore. Rudmore. So the key about this is it's actually distilled at Glen Turret, correct? Correct. And it is their peated version. And this is beautiful. Beautiful! So we bought, we brought a Rudmore in a couple of years ago, and it absolutely blew people away. It was a sherry cask Rudmore. And people were just blown away. No one even knew really what Rudmore was. We didn't know what Rudmore was. And then we started to dig into it. And I think Dave wanted to talk a little bit about Glen Turret, but uh, yeah. it's it's kind of becoming a bit of a, a favorite uh, rare dram is these Rudmore releases. And this is a completely different side of it because it's bourbon casks. Uh, and I, uh, they peat this stuff to 80 parts per million. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Uh, Ardbeg 10 is at 45, just to give you some some sort of uh, something to base that off of. doesn't mean it's going to taste peatier or medicinal or anything, but 80 parts per million is pretty high for a, for a whiskey. And it's got that, I don't know. Ken, do you want to talk about Glen Turret a little bit? You said you were interested. Yeah, I mean, a little, just because it's, uh, I, I love the cool d distillery stories. I mean, uh, Glen Turret is... Uh, one of, if not the oldest, uh, whiskey distillery still producing whiskey in Scotland. Um, it was, uh, I think 1775, a little bit earlier than Bomar. It was, uh, it was actually started. It was an illegal still on a private farm and, uh, just, ba they basically started making whiskey there. It wasn't actually, it was called, um, Hosh Distillery back then. Um, but they, they didn't, uh, actually change the name till 1875. And that's when it became Glen Turret. But it was um, Glen Turret was another another distillery in the region before that that had gone out of business and gotten sort of mothballed. So they took over the Glen Turret name. So I mean, there's lots of discussions whether it's actually the oldest or whether it's Bullmore on Isla or I mean, it, the, the Rudmore um, actual peated whiskey only makes up about 15% of Glen Turret. Um, the, the rest of it would typically go into um, uh, famous Grouse, which is, you know, one of the Edrington malts, one of the distilleries. But, um, for, I, I was doing a bit more reading. Glen Turret was sold in 2019. I didn't know that. To a French company. They, um, oh, I, I did, I, and I mean, that's, I just didn't doing the research. I didn't even, I hadn't even realized that Glen Turret had been sold to a French company. Yeah. It's so they're, called La Lac, La Lac, yes. La Luc Group, La Lac. Hange, yeah. it's not 100% French, maybe, because it's got a Hange Horg white. There's a, sw a Swiss guy involved in the deal. It was something like, yeah, 30 million pounds or something like that. So, I mean, um, Edrington has retained the famous grouse, obviously, but um, Glenn Turret's going to probably move on and, and do some maybe some more single single releases, right, right. which would be kind of cool. I mean, that, that's what we love about, like we've been saying, with the Strictly Limited and the celebration of the cask. Getting to try whiskeys that you wouldn't normally get to try on their own. 
like they're really sort of get a feel for the distillery and what goes into the blends. Yeah. Well, we got a comment here from Kelly, I assume, from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And she says, Glen Turret could be best known for Towser, <laughs> the celery cat, legendary mouser. It's true. Ah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah. They're just tiny, right? It's a tiny distillery. They only, they're just over 200,000 liters a year, I think. Actually, so 340,000 liters. There, 300. There you go. Yeah. I and, love uh, that. Uh, Dan, can you ask Kelly or comment, or maybe she'll just hear me, but they were able to calculate a prediction yeah. on how many m mice that Towser killed over <laughs> the lifespan of that cat. It's, <laughs> it's something ridiculous, and they just and did thousands, like like Thousands, if not yeah. hundreds of thousands. Well, that's the three a day. Well, you get a cat. A thousand a year. Yeah. A thousand in its life. Technically, a lot of these distilleries are out in a farmer's field. I mean, the cat mm -hmm. is not going to go hungry. If you start buying that cat food, you're doing yourself an injustice, really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. My cat, that cat, everybody works in the distillery. This is Scotland. Everyone has to work. That's right. There's no free food. Right. So get that cat to work. Yep. Now, uh, Crystal. Well, it's that. Crystal Coverdale is in here, and she has a question for you guys. Cool. That's a pretty crazy way to land a job, right? What are you? What are all? What were all you guys work-wise before getting into whiskey, or is Rare Gram a part-time on the side fun work thing? So go Appreciate ahead, that. Travis. Tell us first if you want to. Uh, yeah, that's, I'm a, I'm a firefighter full time. This is a completely, uh, fun little, uh, hobby job, I call it. But it's, it's more than a hobby. Oh, it's more than a hobby, but I just, I call it my fun job. Yeah. It's, it's, I do this, I don't do this to, to, uh, make a bunch of money. I do this because I honestly love, like I loved today just researching these five distilleries and the, the whiskeys. I, I, I mean, the guys in the Edmonton Scotch Club know how much, how, how nerdy I get when I start talking about this stuff. So oh, I've I listened to you. <laughs> listened. So yeah, that's, about, that's my story. What about you, Mr. I smell whiskey continuously, Robert? <laughs> um, I actually, by day, I'm a teacher. I teach high school source studies, and I, uh, I, I've studied in history and, and whatnot, so I kind of got really, like I said, really geeky about the history of scotch, the, the idea of this longevity of story that exists in a drink. That's such a cool thing for me. So I, knowing Travis is on the trip, I had a chance to just be part of this company. I'm, I still think I'm a very small part in the sense I just have a chance to be involved in events and whatnot, but uh, yeah, it's, this is 100% just for, it's fun. It's a, it's a, it's a passion that's growing, I hope. And I think, and I, and I, I know that we have an opportunity to do other things, but I don't, I want to, I don't want to ever let go of the fact that just, this is just a way for us to enjoy a really cool thing to, with other people. You, that's all it is. Yeah, and you guys do a good job at it, but don't worry during this uh, self-isolation COVID era that we're in we're all gonna grow a little bit while we're inside drinking nothing but <laughs> what about you, uncle ken what is your uh you, you know what dan i have no idea how i lucked into this um right place <laughs> right time i mean it just kind of fell into it my my full-time job my day job is uh doing it um but uh, i mean we were in Scotland for a reason. We uh, we all love whiskey, and I mean, this is a just a magical opportunity to be able to try a lot of different whiskeys, talk to people that love whiskey, talk to you know guys like you that have different experiences and know different things about whiskey. Like I learn something every time I talk to somebody about whiskey, whether it's like pouring at a festival or a liquor store pouring. Like you, it's just it's such a cool cool experience to be able to just talk to people about whiskey, and I mean. I, there was one festival I worked in um, in Calgary here, and, I, and we talked about teaspooning. And we had a, we had a teaspoon mm -hmm. dram on the table, um, uh, the Burnside, and we talked about that. And it was so cool because 85% of the people didn't know what teaspooning was, or, or hadn't been exposed to it. So it's just you know so cool. Some people did, and they were like, it was great to have that conversation. You saw that sort of connection. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's a great escape from uh, you know uh, my day job and. Spend a little bit of time uh, on weekends or in, in an evening, you know, talking about whiskey. It's uh, it's been uh, pretty pretty cool. That's awesome. And Dolph, 
Not yes, sir. No, we can't see you, but we'll put up the Skype logo because that's what we're using to go through. And first of all, <laughs> Dolph is the president of the Alberta Scotch Society. He does not work for Rare Drams, but he is certainly a fan of Rare Drams. What is it that you do, Dolph? Every... Kind sir, I am another teacher, but I'm a junior high math teacher. So this is, uh, <laughs> the whiskey is an essential part of living for me. And <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I shouldn't say that. No, I love teaching. I do. And uh, I do love my whiskey. And Rare Drams has been part of it probably, are we going to say two years? I've been kind of pretty well in it. Oh, yeah. It's about every time, well, any time, any tasting you have, I'm at the tasting, especially if it's a free tasting, I'm in there. I buy my bottles, though. And uh, Wine and Beyond this weekend sold out tons of your bottles. Everything that was on the shelves t sold them out. Not, I got a couple more for my collection. So you now did. I've got the two, and you which didn't. is what you like, right? You like to have the one to drink and one to keep, so I miss <laughs> you. You didn't call me to come and get some. I don't have enough. I said that to everybody. I put it on every Instagram thing I had on Nobody Twitter. Watches you, that, that Twitter. What's Twitter? Nobody uses Twitter. Twitter. You do That's too, old, Daniel. You put old. your stuff on Instagram. It goes directly to Twitter and Facebook. No, it doesn't, yeah. actually. I have to put it on after. I always forget. Uh, all right. It was Travis <laughs> that reminded me this time of it. Okay, Kelly Kelly came back with an answer. She gave 39, and then she arranged, <laughs> changed, it. changed it to, are you ready? If you haven't read it already, Kelly said 30,000 house yeah. mice. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I don't know how the math teacher would figure that out, but I'm sure we could figure it out between the history teacher and the math teacher. We well, I'm going to say three a day right, <laughs> to get you. Well, no, we're going to double it, though. Three a day would get you, if we go by a month, for 30 days in a month, roughly 900. So let's say three and a half a day gets you 1,000 a month. Does that work? Yeah. Sure. yeah. 30 months? No. Gets you 100. Gets you 100 a month. And multiply it by the, uh, 12. You're over 1,000 a year. How met, How long did this cat live? 15 years? This we don't have any answers. Roughly. Is he not still alive or has he passed on? Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. So if, if you're doing three a day, you're roughly half that amount. So I, so he kills six mice a day is what they're saying. <laughs> roughly. <laughs> oh, no. That's a lot of mice in a day. I don't know if I believe this cat. This cat, this cat supposedly brought like piles of mice back and like made <laughs> a pyramid of dead men. Years, left them on the doorstep. years and years ago, when I lived out east, I had a cat. I've had more cats and dogs than I can even count. And one time I decided I'm going to sleep outside, Mom and Dad. So I did. I slept outside. And lo and behold, when I woke up in the morning, there was a mouse and a bird beside me. Dead. That the mouse had brought me, I think, as a gift or something. So I don't well, know. it liked you. Yeah. Showing its appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was... Uh, yep. I appreciated it. Glad I didn't have to eat the darn things. So... Um, hey, as we're as we're wrapping up this rude more, I don't know if uh, oh. one of the things Bob taught me that one day at the tasting when I first met him was to leave the whiskey in your glass for a minute for every year to let it breathe, yeah. and then for half a second on your mouth for every year. And he always makes sure, like even when he's over here, like just drinking whiskeys on the, he always say, "Yeah, just chew it. You got to chew it." I can't do Scottish accents, but he'll say, "Yeah, <laughs> chew it a little bit." And this Ruinmore has like a like a oily like a chewiness to it. There's a texture to it that's incredible. It was like rolling around in there. Really, really neat whiskey. It is so, good. It's very good. It's first incredible. time I've had it. This Ruinmore is amazing. And like everyone that loves the Ruinmore before, we had a Ruinmore out. Like I said, it was very popular and disappeared. I think this one's better. And I say that biased as hell, but I honestly think this <laughs> one's better. it. It is so tasty. But the color is so different, which is a thing so much fun. It is quite quite light, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. The other Rudemar was so dark. This one's fairly light. Yeah. But it's so good. It is so incredibly good. Well, as I mentioned, my first uh, master class was with an independent bottler. And out of the six or seven that we had in the class, the lightest color was the one that I found the most flavorful. And I still have a bottle of it hidden back here behind all these rare grams that I have. 
but um, they are. You can't you can't judge it by its color, and I mean I think no. why we see so many um, companies that'll put out a darker bottle. Yeah. You can't see. Yeah. It, right? Have I told you, Dan, the uh, this Kenny Mackay story walking around the Morrison Mackay warehouses with his father? Uh, Peter Mackay, sorry, walking around the warehouse uh, at Morrison Mackay. He, he was walking around the warehouse one day, and his dad came and gave him a dram. And he said, try this. And Peter tried it, and he says, that's lovely. What is it? And he goes, that's the Glen Talkers. And he goes, that can't be the Glen Talkers. It's only four years old. And his dad goes, yeah, I know, and it's delicious. And he said, well, you can't bottle it for it. And he said, yeah, I don't know, we're bottling it. And they <laughs> bottled that Glen Talkers at four years old. It sold out around the world, wherever they sent it. And they've been still releasing those Glen Talkers every year. We bring them into the market. But at four years old, that whiskey had something. I poured it blind for people, and they guessed it was 12 years old. That was the average guess. Yeah. Whiskey age is one thing that I've learned so much with this company, with Morrison McKay and Rare Drams, is, the age is really, it's just a number. It, we had that Ben Nevis four-year-old rare drams cask that was one of the coolest That's whiskeys fantastic. ever. Loved it. Smoked candied bacon, the flavors that came out of that thing. And then I've had 30-year-old whiskeys that were just kind of ho-hum. So I, I think, I think again, I think what's really cool, and that's what I love about this company, and I, it's why I actually, like, when I say I'm, I, this is a full-time job, so I have to love the company, um, <laughs> Every single cask has to be good. Every single release has to be tasty. If it's like a four-year-old and it's good, we'll go with it. If it's a 27-year-old Wakadosh and now it's ready, we'll go with it. And that's what I think is really cool because it's that Ben Nev is four. For a lot of people, was the best whiskey they had that year. For a lot of people. And that's because it was such a unique whiskey at that time in that cask. And that's what's really cool about this single cask stuff. We can We can do things. And we can move whiskey that just when it's ready, it's ready. Let's go with it. And I think that's such a cool thing. Yep. So I've gonna I'm gonna show you something. Am I still frozen on your screens or am I just frozen on my screen? You're not frozen, you're fine on our screen. Not <laughs> only Dave. Good thing Dave, I didn't good Dave, thing I, I didn't like, I'm my fine on my off. screen, but I'm that's frozen perfect. on their screen. Dave's making up for it, don't worry about it. But everybody, I met Peter Mackay and I said, Hey, that's a nice tie. And he gave it to me. Uh, <laughs> this tie we'll show it off. is a, a little keep, bit higher. Is a keeper of the quake tie, <laughs> and he he just took it off right there, right in front of Bob, Kyle, and all of us, and said, "Here, have her." Now the other favorite thing, and he wouldn't give that to me, is his coffee cup had a number forty six written on it, and forty six is the MotoGP racer. Known as Valentino Rossi. So he told me that he was either going to try and become a professional golfer or a, a motorcycle road racer, right? Now I have, I, I'm, I call myself Whiskey Throttle for a reason. I have five motorcycles and I have all these whiskeys. Um, and so we got along quite well, actually, after that. Uh, and he took me into the warehouse, too. And uh, we got to try, what was it, six different barrels before the group had picked one that we liked the best? Yeah, you were with the Keg and Cork crew. That is right, yeah. yeah. And you guys bottled, you ended up picking a 1987 Invergordon. Which is very good whiskey as well. Yeah. yeah. I have that here. All of I think Keg, King... you have it, I think, for sure you do, Dan. So this is from your lineup called Bequest, right? Yeah, those are like special. It's, it's sort of similar to the Black Gold, but it's not the heavily sherry. They're just specially bottled releases for whether it be a single cask for a customer or I know they did a bequest for the retirement of somebody. I can't remember who. It was called Chairman's Bequest Bullmore. Um, so there's special bottlings that aren't done very often. But this is also a, um, what do we call that? This is a store pick, right? Uh, correct. Yeah, that's King Court. Yeah. yeah. So that's they they bought the entire barrel. Yeah. Do you guys want to move on to the to the Buna and uh, tell the story about the the magical dram at the Balmoral Pub in in Edinburgh? <laughs> yes, that sounds good. So we're gonna pour one more dram. 
Oh, but gentlemen, before you do that, go back to the uh, the Glengarra and give that one a little whiff right now. It's all sweetness. Well, that's one of my favorite things to do, especially um, especially with up. Pete. It, it, it's awesome to put a drop or two of water. In, go back to your, your uh, whiskey after if you save just a little bit. You don't need a lot, and go back to it. You'll swear it was a different. You poured it out of a different glass, right? Which, Dolph, what did, what did you go back to? I went back to the Glengarrett. The very first one. Our first one. Yep. Ah, that's that's changed a big way. Totally, hey? Yeah. Yep. Always, I and I it. love that. And it makes me look like an alcoholic because I sit there at home and I usually <laughs> have two drams. And it's usually a peat with a non-peat. And I find it helps me uh, get the character of the non-peat. It doesn't what? really help me with the peat, but it helps me with the non-peat to have both of them. Well, but my wife used to it, so it's okay. Really good peated whiskeys will have different layers of sweetness too, right? Like you might have like a barbecue and not, so it might be able to pull that out. Like peated whiskey is fairly young, usually. Peated whiskey is fairly young, so you might get like a lot of flavor of that, that young alcohol, but you might, a good peated whiskey will also have different things going on. And sometimes going back to the sweet will actually help you pull that out, which I think is so much fun. Like this Buna. It's Kelly, going to be able to do that, I think. Yeah. Kelly says goodbye. She had to leave. She says, thanks for the fun, Trev. I'm enjoying your Edmonton Scots Club Highland Park. Oh, she also they... said that the cat was 20. And, how old? And the 24. Cat, I saw. 24, she said. I was looking, yeah. Died That's in incredible. Thanks, wow. Kelly, very much for coming in. And but Kelly referred to our um, Edmonton Scotch Club Orkney cask. Uh, Dan, do you have a picture of it there? I know mine probably won't show up, or I can hold it. I don't know if I show up or not. I uh, that show up. I can see it. Uh, I can, yeah. we, can, we can pop it up. Well, just she was. She probably poured a dram of it, knowing that she was watching this. But uh, just a really. This is the first cask that the Edmonton Scotch Club ever purchased. And uh, it was sent to me as a sample to to sell to other customers. <laughs> and I nosed it in the basement, as I do when I get new whiskeys. I get them all, and I pour them all, and I start nosing. And I smelled this whiskey, and all it said was Orkney on the sample bottle. That's all. And immediately the nose reminded me of, like, melted uh, Werther's Originals. It was just like a smack yeah. in the face. So I called Dave Robert over, bearded <laughs> Dave, and I said, Dave, you got to come smell this. So he smelt it, and he's like, oh, my God, yeah, it's like Werther's Originals, without me even saying Werther's Originals. And so the next thing I know, I start texting some guys, and uh, like an hour and a half, two hours later, we bought a 330-bottle cask <laughs> of what is actually, um, well, peated whiskey from Orkney, so you can do the the math on that. But it's it just a really cool, if, you, if anyone has a club or anything, but you can buy whole casks and put your own labels on them, and it's... It's as a Scotch Club, one of the coolest things we've ever done. Maybe the we haven't done very many cool things. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's pour our last dram out of the five. This the, and, the Bunnahabbin. This is a Bunnahabbin. I feel like Bunnahabbin's been killing it lately too. It's such a cool distillery. Hold on, Dave. <laughs> the, two, the 2004 peated Bunnahabbin. It's 15 years old. It's 53.8%, and it is a lovely, oily pour down the side of that glass. Yep. It is a, uh, it looks a little bit more viscous, maybe, is the word. Oily works. It's nice. Yes. Yep. Whiskey uh, Quest is in. Hello, Whiskey Quest. He is a uh, reviewer of whiskeys from down in the U.S., Donner Pass whiskey has been in here the whole time. Thank you, Donner. And Chris, thanks for tuning. Yep, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Chris Beaton says, "I bet the Buna is amazing." Hi, Chris. And you guys must know who Bull Barley is. Bull Barley? I don't know Bull Barley. Is that like a a nickname? It might be. I Bull. see the picture, but it looks like an awesome wig. I wish I had one. <laughs> I messaged Mike Breezebaugh with uh, 
Bonahaven in Canada and distill. And he said the heavily peated bon, bon, he calls it Bonahaven. I've always called it Bonahaven. He says Bona. Bon, Bonahaven? Bona. Well, I don't know. He's got a French accent too. So. Yeah. So they're, their heavily peated stuff is called Bonahaven Moen or Moin, M O I N E. It is actually Bonahaven. 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 And their heavily peated stuff is 40 to 45 parts per million, which is right around what Ardbeg 10 would be at. Okay. And so this. Oh, it's well, I thought it was this one. Here's the Buna, and that's the P. Chinebeck. There you go. But this isn't. This isn't Chenebec or Quimbanic. This is, uh, yeah, just a single cask of their peated spirit. I know. Okay. I know Dolph wants to share so bad, but we can't see any of his. Uh... <laughs> well, you can. No, I. I He's showing. You can. Oh. No, I cannot. I, I'm busy dealing with my people and my screen okay. on, on this. Well, yes. Travis can see it at least, and so can Kenny. He's. He refused. I can see it too, buddy. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, good. So I got some people. The hell with the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bar stitch. There's 20 people watching and seven thumbs up, and you can't let us see it. Math teachers, technology. Oh. Well, if you tried harder, Daniel, I would be on there. I'm, I'm, I'm putting this all on you. I'd like to say something though. This is really kind of cool how Kelly was on here, and Kelly, being SMWS Canada, and how in the whiskey community there's not as much competition like sure there is always competition but she, here she is on the channel and she's supporting you guys as much as possible she's there she's pouring it in her dram she's bought them before and i just love that uh, that's just something uh it makes me feel special to be part of this community when i see things like that and she's not on to suck up to anymore no. to try to get yeah. that. kelly and rob are both lovely people they they really yeah. are I would uh, when when I heard she was on it, I smiled on the inside because it, it, Kelly Kelly has done a lot for me and this club, and her support of our drams for fans tastings has been nothing short of astronomical, like thousands of dollars of donations uh, every year for our uh, charity tasting. So they are fantastic people, and we were we we do the same both ways. It's just and and you know what. Um, uh, Dolph, is that a lot of that is just uh, maybe a toast, but a lot of that comes from a guy like Jay Wheelock. And, you know, you think about how he acted within the industry. It was never about yeah. competition. It was never about, oh, we got to compete with them. It was, we're all in this together. We're all trying to do the same thing. And he was actually the guy that taught me to bring chocolate to tasting. So that's yeah. where I got that from, too. So. <laughs> And he's another independent bottler, so, you know. Exactly. It's beautiful. it's. I'm glad you mentioned that, Dolph, because it's part of what makes uh, all this so fun for all of us, I think. Yeah. Um. So this Bunahaven <laughs> is delightful. It is a, oh, great. It's a balanced mm. peat. It has a, it has um, a nice color to it. It's really oily. It really sticks to the side of the glass nicely. And to the tongue and the roof of the mouth. Yeah. It's, all there's got, mouth. <laughs> it's mouth finished, man. It is a, it is a leather, fantastic Buna. Yeah, that is a leathery, leathery Buna in the sense that like, it's yeah. that's delicious. I like their description in here. Um, New leather, there you go. Chocolate ice and strawberry sauce, peat smoke, and a sea breeze. We're talking about Kelly, these sound similar to some other tasting notes I've read. <laughs> yeah, everybody is uh, commenting right now that they will miss Jay. If anybody doesn't know, Jay Wheelock passed away unexpectedly. Nothing to do with COVID. And we all are going to miss him very, 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 very much, right? Yeah. yeah. And I feel, we've, I feel like we've been getting together more almost and it's it's like every time we do it it's a little salute to jay i think i know i know you guys can't see it but my last cup the last glass i'm using is actually from the whiskey festival in victoria and i saved it for the last because i want to smell it and this is actually the last time i saw jay so i decided to use that cup tonight is it well i also have a glass that i'm using right now that is a, in remembrance of jay as well actually this was at the um it was a fundraiser. I forget now exactly who. At uh, what is the the gym downtown? The one beside Ezio Ferron Park, um, the club. 
gentleman, I forget the name of it anyway, Jay was there pouring and my lovely friend Julia <laughs> didn't think, didn't know that these glasses were not complimentary and she brought them back. <laughs> she put them in her purse right as right after Jay poured me two samples, which I tried to pour the samples into the little bottles here and Jay's like, uh, maybe I should do that because I was not getting it all in the bottle. <laughs> but Jay didn't even flinch. Jay's just like, hey, hey let me help you with that. And he just, he poured it in there. One shot, no problem. He's off. That was the uh, Hops and Whiskey Festival. At Glenora, or what's the skate? The yeah, Royal place. Glenora. Royal you Glenora. Go. Thank you very much. What was it for again there? Uh, hops, hops and Whiskey Festival. Hops and Whiskey, which once upon a time used to be called um, Hopscotch. Oh, really? A fundraiser that they had around. Somebody did. My very first time, that's how I got into whiskey, was going to a hopscotch uh, tasting at the museum downtown. And a, a girl that I had known actually was working probably for the liquor depot or somebody like that. And she reached over the table and brought out a 30-year-old. To this day, I only know that it was a 30-year-old whiskey. I do not know what it was. I forget. <laughs> that was like probably 10 years ago. I have no idea what it was. Chris Beaton is asking a question about the Buna. How much? Is that his question? Yeah, you can yeah. see that on your screen. <laughs> I can, I'm, no, I'm frozen, but um, it's, it's, the, how, what's the, cost? the approximate price I'm thinking is going to be sort of in that 260 270 range is my guess. For this? For this Buna, yeah. 15 years old, yeah. So Buna is... Just right now, I think part of it with just the – I think Boone is just expensive right now. I think that's just kind of the way it is. Um, There's a, but after after tasting this Boone, I will tell you that I will be buying a bottle for my personal collection. Uh, just it, It's tough to put prices on things, but I would pay 270 for this bottle, no problem at all. No, it, just don't tell my wife. <laughs> I think she's going to watch. She's, she's a subscriber to my channel. She's going to watch. <laughs> well, we were, we were talking earlier. Really it's a club bottle. Yeah, oh. it's for the club. Travis. Yeah, club. yeah buy a club bottle. But for the, earlier, we were talking about like, is this our part time job or our full time job? I want. I just want to say that this part time job, even though I do get money every once in a while, I probably spend more money <laughs> into the company buying the whiskey I really like, and so I come out a little bit in a loss. This is a job that I get that I actually spend money for to be a part of because it's the whiskey's so delicious. And this the the Spoonerhaven is amazing. It's incredible. It is. It, this one is very good. I, I mean all the way from the nose to the I love the way it 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 pours off the sides or rolls off the sides of the oil. It's chewy. It's got that like you can squish it through your teeth a little bit. It's awesome. Yeah, then Go the original... back to the Akintoshin now, gentlemen. Try that. Oh, oh, dear. I'm enjoying it a lot. And I like my Akintoshins, and this made it better, too. Yes. Dan, I'm just going to quickly oh. run off uh, the – because we're this is actually the biggest uh, order that we brought in since I've been part of Rare Drams. So I'm just going to run off the nine new whiskeys we're bringing in, if that's okay. Go right ahead, my friend. Uh, so we got the cell of the Akintosh in 1992 celebration of the cask. We got the boot, the Bunnahaven that we just tried. Um, there's a, this is the first time I've seen this distillery come in for us. It's a strictly limited duck town, 2009. Duff town is actually a city, a little town in space side that has a whole bunch of distilleries and you can only visit a couple of them. It's a little bit of another story. <laughs> Uh, we got a strictly limited Glen Rothis 2011 coming in. That's a sherry butt. Caramelized popcorn was a tasting note on that. Uh, the Ruidmore, which we just had. There's a, do you guys remember the four year old Ben Nevis we were talking about earlier? There is a new Ben Nevis coming in, but it's a strictly limited, so it'll be a 37.5%. Um, but it, tasting notes are raisins, stewed prunes, and leather, so I think we're going to get some of the same. A, the Glengarry that we just had and the Glenbergy that we just had. So nine new whiskeys, which is a huge order for us. Usually we just do four or five. Uh, and wanted to mention, too, for the BC folks that I, I know there's a couple of them watching, the Mortlach, the Dufton, the Ben Nevis, and the Ruidmore are all going to be in BC. Oh, there's a 
Mortlack coming in. It wasn't on my sheet. That's going uh, to Calgary as well. Mortlack's cool. I want one. Mortlack is dark, dark red. I want a Mortlack. Travi, was that a pretty big um, uh, order of Mortlack? Uh, Calgary, the one shop wanted all of it, so it's, there's seven cases going to craft sellers in Calgary. They took the whole order, and it's uh, it'll be there. They'll start pulling next week, I think. It'll be in Calgary. You know, I, I'm coming over to your backyard and giving you a slap, right? You know that, right? Uh, that's not – that's yeah, you, I, you can slap me. It's okay. <laughs> you won't be the first fireman I've knocked around. <laughs> I'll, grow, I'll grow my beard out thicker, and you can slap me all you want. I won't feel shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll feel it. I feel um, like Dan, Kenny, Dan, I, I, I want a Mortlock, Kenny. Okay. I'm going to put an order in right now. Oh, yeah, I got a contact now down in uh, Calgary. Oh, yeah, Kenny's your boy. Buy one and save one. Buy one and save yeah, one. Buy one and save one. No, it's uh, – I'm really excited about Ben Nevis. That Ben Nevis, to see what happens with that bottle is going to be so cool. You realize Stacy Kyle's in, right? Yeah, I saw her. I don't see anything here. So, hi, Stacy. Stacy is available. You see that? E, ben Nevis, Rudmore, Dufftown, Glen Ord, and Portlock. Yeah, she's got the Mortlock, too. We're not in BC, so if you're not sending any over here, Stacy, we can't be friends. Very cool. <laughs> and if you guys are looking for in your home workouts during uh, isolation and stuff, Stacy's husband, Bob's son, Jason, has an Instagram account that is hilarious and also informative it's called train like an athlete That's and he does he does these daily videos where he combines workouts with drinking whiskey <laughs> it's so awesome one of them was he had bands around his waist and he had to like walk away from a wall grab a dram have a sip and then walk back well uh <laughs> if you're looking for some humor during all of this jason's instagram account is is one of my new favorites so he just subscribed to me so that's awesome yeah yeah jason's a good man yeah, that's awesome. Um, it's and then Danny Ma. It's it's live. I'm not sure what's live. Danny Ma is Danny Ma is a, a VIP rare drummer. That man is a, a a really really fun guy to just hang out and drink drink whiskey with. Danny is awesome. Yep. Uh, and Danny Ma, Car- he usually has uh, uh, one of the best noses at our events. Actually, the little lady that follow uh, comes with him. Yeah. Carmen, this white Carmen. This white, white Carmen. <laughs> Carmen, that's right. Yeah, Carmen kills it, kills it. Like her nose is amazing. It's 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 quite incredible. Like some of these events, I I find females have a better nose for whiskey than men do. Most of the time, man. Most of the time. Yeah, it's very cool. My wife does. One hundred percent. Most of the time, absolutely. Uh, you want to know why I sit and nose this whiskey the whole time? It's because I'm just trying to find like one or two things. I I'm terrible at nosing whiskeys. Like you, you, you like it. I'm, What's that? You just know you like it. I yeah, like it. <laughs> I think it's like that apples with the Glen Berge. I was like, yeah, for sure, apples. But someone had to say, I'm, I'm really bad at naming flavors. And I've come to understand that that's okay. You don't have to be able to write 10 or 12 tasting notes. You, you know, if you could drink a whiskey and maybe find one flavor. But I think some people get frustrated that they can't list 10 or 12 notes like on an SMWS bottle or uh, the back of a bottle, but it, it's, it really should not, uh, I guess, discourage you because I tell you right now, I'm still terrible at it <laughs> and I try, I try and work at it, but it's, I still know what I like. Yeah. Well, you watch someone like Ralphie and he sits there and he reels off 15 different flavors in such a case. And I'm sure he doesn't taste all 15 then. Maybe he's been working on it for a week. Right. Oh yeah. To figure it out. Yeah, that's, and that's the thing that got me so annoyed because I always wanted to be able to taste the same way these guys you see on all these tastings. You watch YouTube and they're tasting, and they're reeling off ten, fifteen different flavors, and I, I can get one or two. Yeah. And I'm the same way as you, Trevor. But I do keep working at it, and if I do want to know, I'll just water it down to fifty percent, and then I'll get the flavors. But then it destroys the whiskey, so I don't like it as much. But that's the only way I can really get beyond not knowing something when it makes me so angry at that point chris on well, the way the way you do it in the basement off is what i do a lot is if i'm really want to delve into a whiskey i'll pour two glasses and that side by side is for me the biggest way because i can go back and be like oh wow uh i find that helps me more than any and i still might not be able to describe a flavor but i at least can say 
oh, wow, these are really different, and yep. it gets you a little more out of it. Well, and Dolph, I think you have a pretty good strategy, too, about saving just a little bit in a glass. I mean, a lot of guys do. And then going back and coming back to them after, and it just gives you a chance to sort of, after you your palate has sort of opened up and you're starting to feel some of those flavors, you can actually taste and smell those. Like, I, I went back to the Akintosh, and I got, like, just slapped in the face. Like, it was so much on the nose and so Wasn't much. Wasn't it great? It was. It was really, really right good. Right after the peat. Yeah, it's, it's it's like, I mean, your palate needs to have some time to open up. And, yeah, the peat sort of blocks everything off a little bit, and you go back and you can f- taste those sort of more subtle notes. It's pretty cool, yeah. It's hard to do with half-ounce pours, but I always try and tell people at those events, like, if you can just a little bit, yeah, you'll be amazed. <laughs> so, I have one, sorry, one more thing. Sorry, oh, I, I, hate oh, I have a like, lord... One more thing I do. One more thing I do. Social media newbies, I swear to Lord. (laughs) When I try something at home, I always start with like a, 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 almost like a, a dram that's kind of like like an easy dram that I know really well, and I kind of open my mouth up with that, and then I try something new. Because I find like just jumping into a whiskey, you carry a lot of your day with you into the first one, and that's why coming back, you get your mouth just opens up a bit. It's kind of cool. That's all. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. What did you say again? No one was, uh, what? The idea is, <laughs> I, I, if I want to try whiskey. No, I he heard you. Start. He heard you. We, I'm just joking. No, I think it. you should repeat yourself. <laughs> well, I, I get a Spring Bank 10 because it's, it's it's an easy drinker. You're, I smell that from the whole home. time. Nobody right. even knows what you're talking or, or smelling stuff, I swear to God. Yeah, I smell like on the screen for four hours is what I do. I've got a picture. I sent it to you already where you had your nose right for sucking the Glen Karen logo right off the back of the glass. You think? You think? Oh, oh my heavens. Is... Hey, what do we think about this here, guys? Tell us what, what I'm seeing right here. I can't it's see It's a it. great picture. It's a picture of two guys standing on a bridge. I think I've actually stood on that exact same bridge in 2018. Oh, is that Kenny and I on uh, at St. Andrews? Yep. Oh man, that is that is a that picture is above my computer at my workstation. Uh, I actually gave Kenny for Christmas this year a double picture, one with me and him, and one with his mother and my grandmother on the same bridge. All right. That's that's Grandma Watt right there. She would have been a rare jams rep too if she was around. She would have came uh, came along. Yeah. So that was uh, Kenny and I lined up at 3 a.m. and. Uh, didn't have any clubs, really shouldn't have been there, and uh, we had some, we we were able to golf St. Andrews together that day at about 9 o'clock in the morning, and it was a pretty cool experience if anyone, if you ever are in Scotland and you don't think you can golf at St. Andrews and it's too hard, you really just have to go line up at like 3 in the morning, and you should get on. At 3 in the morning? And we would lined up at 3 in the morning in the pitch black. It was an incredible experience. <laughs> Nicholas, and we got Travis, Travis was number eight in line, and I was number eleven in that line because when I went and parked the car and came back, they wouldn't let us stand together. No social distancing, even then. <laughs> yeah. No, because people are that serious about their tea time. So Nicholas uh, says goodbye, gentlemen. I'm heading out for the evening. I want to thank you for doing the live tasting. I was a pleasure, and looking forward to attending more of them. You're a beauty, oh, Nick. Good night, Nicholas. Good night. Uh, there's no there's no picture but i also went golfing in st andrews i found if you show up at like 10 11 in the you know, you know in the morning and you walk on in the morning pitch, oh in the afternoon well in the morning like right before lunch <laughs> and uh there's a pitch and putt you can walk right on you could grab your little putter you could put around the pitch and putt and you you've golf st andrews you're good to go i got a hole in one did anybody mistaken you two guys as a couple <laughs> maybe <laughs> dan and i it was another dan no, that's yeah. like uh, Uncle Ken and you, you're, you're kind of standing there looking a little brave together. Kenny, Kenny and I, well, that's family. That's love right there. Oh, this there. isn't, you can't see it. It's 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 Kenny and uh, Dave. Oh, sorry. With some oh, behind a rock. That's what we got to, look, Kenny was my castle buddy. Everyone else got sick of listening to the history teacher talk about castles, except for Kenny. Kenny yeah, was on Dave was my personal castle guy, and all the rest of the guys would leave, and they would go to, like, get the car. They'd be done for the day, and I, Dave and I would walk around for another, like, half an hour, 45 minutes, 
checking out castle stuff. It was uh, it was so much fun. Daisy says, "Just go to the beach behind the bridge." <laughs> okay, Dave, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you to one the- one opportunity. Right here to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your what you would like to do with whiskey and and your history videos. Oh, whiskey insight! You're putting me on the spot. It's not ready yet. Um, I'm it's gonna a good start. Idea, buddy. I'm gonna start talking about uh, the history. Let's call it Terra Noire history. The land where the distilleries exist today. There's thousands of years of history before that. So I'm gonna break down a whiskey. But not talking about what the t- whiskey actually tastes like, but what's, about what happened in that area before the distillery existed and why that distillery is so cool today because of that. And I'm going to start soonish and it's called Whiskey Insights. Um, and that's just one part of it. There's a bunch of things we're going to do, but just for fun, I'm going to try to mesh my history, knowledge of history plus whiskey in a unique way, I hope. And we'll see how it goes. Awesome. Thank you very much. That was the- <laughs> <laughs> oh poor Dave. Everybody heard you're gonna do that now, so guess what? It's gonna get I have to do it now. it's gonna get stolen by everybody. <laughs> well, I'll do it first. I have some ideas. Here, here's Dave's the picture. A- Explain to me this picture here. Which one is it? It is a picture of a very large man in the middle. Three goofy guys wearing uh, Edmonton. Uh, some oh, YEG t shirts and, and some guy wearing a pink shirt. Travis, that's oh, the top of hotel, which is Travis. Oh. So, as we're, as we're drinking a, uh, well, we just finished drinking a pretty amazing dram in the Buna, in the Buna, the Buna. Um, <laughs> we were, we went on an Edinburgh whiskey walking tour. Ooh, so, nice. being the planner that I am, I basically looked up the best whiskey pubs in Edinburgh and I drew up a walking whiskey tour where we went to all these pubs, had a couple drams at each pub. Uh, one of the pubs was the Balmoral Hotel Whiskey Bar. And we walked in there as we do, pretending that we know what we're doing and just really not knowing what we're doing. And we start ordering these whiskeys, and the bartender is that giant man. His name's Cam. He's on Instagram. He's a beauty. He posts pictures from the Balmoral all the time. I think it's Lumberjack Cam or something like that on Instagram. I'll have to share it later. And Cam kind of realized that we were on this cool whiskey adventure and just nerding out. And we gave him a Scotch Club pin, which if you ever go to Scotland, Dolph, with Alberta Scotch Society, just bring pins. Pins. People do weird things for pins. Oh, it's incredible. You just give pins to everybody. Just give them away. Uh, So we gave Cam a pin, and we were talking. And so he goes behind the bar. And he brings out this bottle of Glenfiddich that was just a clear bottle, again, with that little white sticker. It was a single cast. How old was that Glenfiddich? We don't know. He didn't tell us. No, it's sherry. And it was only one of two bottles that had ever been drawn from the cast that is actually still at Glenfiddich Distillery. It was about half gone. He poured us an ounce. There's, <laughs> there was five of us sitting there. We spent 45 minutes passing this glass around, sharing this one ounce of Glenfiddich that was one of the most incredible things I've ever tasted. It would be right up there with the Carspage 42 for my dram of the trip. So we did one round passing around between the five of us nosing it. And then we did a second round where we all got to nose it again. And then we did another round where each took a little sip. And then we did and one ounce of Glenfiddich made for the most incredible story. And now every time someone goes to Edinburgh, I say, you got to go say hi to Cam at the Balmoral. He's a, he's going to take care of you. He's a beauty. And look at that whiskey collection. I mean, it's, 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 it was just an incredible little spot. Um, yeah. So if you go to Edinburgh, do a walking whiskey tour and end at the Balmoral, uh, whiskey pub there or whiskey bar. Travis, I yeah. need to know who took the very last sip. Who, who was the one that stepped up and finished oh. this <laughs> I'm saying it's got to be Dave, right? <laughs> where is good this good picture here where are you pouring there mr uncle uncle kenny can you see the picture and i'm not, and I'm not seeing it either sorry dad oh what has happened to you guys you lost everything you know what's pretty cool dan last year at the co-op whiskey festival in calgary uh ken and i for the first time on this adventure got to stand and pour rare drams together the uncle nephew combo at the co-op whiskey festival 
so that was kind of cool. And go for several beers afterwards. I think that that's what we're seeing here. This last picture is your booth at the Co-op Whiskey Festival. You were right beside yeah, Tomatin and Rafflati. But I don't. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't, that sounds right. I don't see any candies or chocolate or anything. <laughs> when you do nice these beside you, kind of a yeah, S- what? ski and do. When you do oh, these festivals. Oh, sorry, you, sorry, Travis, I'm going to interrupt. Dan, that was my first ever pouring. That was at um, oh the the wine shop in Calgary here, Trav. Oh, okay. You can see the pictures now. Oh, Zin Wine Market. Popped up on on my other feet here. That was the yeah the first time I ever walked into a pouring to to actually pour whiskey. I had no idea. This the the second one was at the um, Calgary Whiskey Festival, and then the third one I just popped up there was at uh, Willow Park uh, Co-op. Yeah, I mean it's the, the whiskey festivals are pretty. I mean pretty big down here. They do a lot of different ones. Oh yeah. Well, Dolph. Dolph, you've you've poured at them before, right? Dolph, like his yep. for different companies. I mean, there, it's it's fun, and it's every time you go to one, that's why all those pictures kind of feel the same because you see the same people. <laughs> it's always you go and give Jay a hug, you give yep. uh, Andrew oh. Walls a hug, and and then you pour for two three hours, and you are just exhausted. <laughs> but but it's still kind of fun doing it. I mean, you just you're talking about whiskey for like two three hours straight, and your mouth hurts. And go ahead, Dolph. Sorry, but the time flies pretty quickly when you're up there because you're, you're doing something you love but i'd rather pour than drink and i've been on the other side of that table a lot at those whiskey festivals and you're doing as many whiskeys and they all blend together by the end of the night when you're oh, working cool. them it's fantastic yeah and it, you talk to people before it opens you try a couple drowns from people before it opens you find out what's kind of special that night if you have someone working with you, you can take off for 15 minutes and try something really special too that everyone's talking about. I don't know. I think it's a it's a great way to get to know the whiskey industry is working behind the table. I think I learned a lot back there. Yeah, well, I imagine you'll be back there uh, many more times, knowing well, you're. If we ever get out of here, yeah. We'll <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Don't worry. But you might want to go back in after. Who knows what's going to happen. So we got one yeah, more maybe. picture to show, and then we'll, we'll talk about uh, moving on because we've almost been two hours, right? Yeah. Really? So this picture here, who wants to describe this one? We'll leave it to Uncle Kenny. You have to explain what this guy's doing. And we can't see it on our screen. We have to wait till it comes up on the feed there, Dan. You do not if you have. Never mind. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's a great picture. Yeah. Describe it, Dan. What's the picture of? I thought you could see it. I mean, it should be coming live to you guys. And anyway, it, it's a guy in a tartan doing a heel kick <laughs> while he's there holding he a gold uh, shot. It's Travis dancing. <laughs> it's Travis dancing in a fan field. Doll- doing the kick? That was at my niece's wedding with, with the family colors. I don't know. I, I still have a. Uh, these guys were. Uh, my, I had my my fiftieth birthday this year, and uh, a bunch of good friends and family all pitched in and uh, are buying a kilt for me. Ah. Proper Watt tartan kilt. So nice. I uh, once this uh, once this uh, COVID stuff passes, I'll be uh, I'll be getting fitted. I'll have to probably go on a diet for about uh, three months, but I'll. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it work. But yeah, Travis and I will be sporting similar, uh, similar manly skirts. I'm gonna have to follow Stacy's uh, husband's Instagram and start working out with him on. on, on <laughs> but I'm not worried about a kilt. <laughs> so, anyway, John, yeah, that. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to say about the five grams that we just had? Really nice mix of flavors. I thought. Yeah, a lot of yeah. fun. I enjoyed them. Absolutely. Great order, Travis. <laughs> Nailed, yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> and it's great to keep going back and forth. You still, I've still got a little bit left of the Glengarry, and that's it. But So that's my finish off one. I finished off the two peeps right away. So, uh, I'll just say, Dan, and on behalf of uh, myself and the Rare Jams team, and even Morrison, Mackay, and to you and Dolph, thanks for being part of this. Dan, thanks for uh organizing everything this is the first time we've done something like this i was a little 
nervous, kind of just hoping it goes across okay. But I think when five people are talking about whiskey and hanging out, it can't be that bad, right? No, especially yep. while we're all stuck inside for the most part. I mean, I'm yeah. stuck home all day long, but some people are, so it's it's good. And I appreciate the opportunity, and I thank you all for putting up with some of the technology glitches and so forth, but it'll just help us for the next one that we do, and, and we'll make it all work. So That's thank right, you, and we'll say... Oh, good, great, buddy. Yeah, you did great. And good morning to Tartan Pants Bob, who will watch this in the morning in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. morning, Bob. Actually, when <laughs> I was with Bob in in uh, at the Morrison Mackay distillery i forget what they actually call it now i have to look it up but they have their own distillery but we went into that warehouse as well as then we went into the one with all these gorgeous old whiskeys and their bottling area and whatnot but he was wearing tartan converse sneakers yeah oh, really they're wicked i want a pair they were phenomenal he says yeah these are the only ones in the world you'll never get another pair <laughs> like well yes i will i'll find a way <laughs> <laughs> if I could match Bob's fashion sense, I'd be a lot further ahead in life. Well, the man knows how to dress. He's very, like he said he's a, a true gentleman, right? He truly is, yeah. Yeah. More